Hey everyone, Chelsea here from So Simple Home. Today we are going to do a fun and easy summer sewing project. So when I think of summer, oftentimes I will think of like um, the ocean and palm trees and pineapples and coconuts and just warm weather, right? So today's project, we are actually going to make a really fun summer pineapple bunting that you can put up for a party, put up just for the summer months on your mantle, um, hang in a bedroom, you could use it for um, a luau party, whatever. Um, so the things that you're gonna need today. Um, you're gonna want the pineapple bunting uh, printable pattern. You can get that link in the description. It's two pages, it has the bunting, or the, the pineapple part of the bunting, and then the pineapple crown, and it also has the summer letters that you need to do the applique on the front. Um, and like I said, this is a really simple project. You can always add to it and make it more um, in, of an advanced sewing project, but this is a really great beginner sewing project. So make sure you go get the pattern and get that printed. Um, you are also going to need some fleece in various colors. You can use scraps. Um, I've got some red and some black. You can use whatever you have um, on hand. I uh, chose to use um, some real bright colors. I have kind of a blue and a yellow and then I have this really pretty um, kind of fuchsia color. So that's what I'm using for my um, bunting. So you're going to need some colored pineapples, and you could use them, you could do them all yellow. You could have all yellow pineapples, totally up to you. Um, and then you're going to need to um, get some green for the crown of your pineapple. And again, you could change that up if you wanted to um, have different colors. But like I said, I'm going to kind of stay a little bit traditional and do greens with some colored pineapples. So as you can see, I've already cut out my uh, pineapples. So you have this piece here, cut out my pineapples, and then I cut out uh, my crowns just to save on time because nobody wants to watch me cut out the pattern pieces. Um, so you're going to need to um, cut out six pineapples and six crowns. Um, and again, you can kind of change it up however you want. But we're going to go ahead and sew up our pineapples to start with. So. I already have one, well I have a couple done, but you can kind of see what it looks like when it's done. I'm going to sew the crown on and then I'm actually going to sew kind of a quilted pattern on the pineapple to make it look like a pineapple so that it has um, kind of that uh, texture and look to it. So the first thing we're going to do is put the crown on. So we're going to place the crown on a flat surface and then we're going to just kind of find the middle of our pineapple the best that we can and overlap it about a quarter of an inch. You can kind of see right there. It's about a quarter of an inch overlap. And then we're just gonna stitch that down with our sewing machine. Now I'm using a yellow thread. You could use black. Um, it really, honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna do this one here, overlap. Um, some of mine, I think all of mine are yellow. Some of them have, like this one, you can kind of see that the back side actually is in a black um, thread, and that's kind of a, a fun um, detail, but you can do whatever you want. So my uh, top thread is yellow and my bottom is black, and it just kind of gives it a little bit more uh, kind of a depth to it. But typically I would go, in most projects, I would use the same top thread as bottom thread. All right, so my top of my pineapples are sewn on. Now I'm going to create kind of the quilted um, look. And to do that, it's actually very, very simple. Um, you could take a fabric marking pen. Let's see if I can find mine here, yep. You could take a fabric marking pen and actually mark your lines if you want. I'm not gonna take the time to do that because I don't really care if it's perfect. I just want it to kind of have that look. So I'm gonna start at the bottom, and I'm gonna stitch across to the other side. I'm not even gonna back stitch. Then I'm gonna pull some thread out, and then I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna say about an inch, an inch and a half, and go straight across again. Do 
doing my best to stay as straight as I can. Sometimes that's a challenge, right? It's keeping a straight line, and that's fine. It's a pineapple. Nobody's actually going to look at it real close. If they get really off, you can always unstitch and redo it. And like I said, you could most definitely um, draw your lines on there first. And if you're using like a water soluble or you're using a um, heat soluble pen, then you can just heat them right off. Okay, so I have, oop, I forgot one right here. I'm just cutting, trimming all those extra threads. So I have my lines here, and now I'm just gonna go the opposite direction to give it, again, that quilted look. So I'm just going the opposite angle, lift, turn, and about an inch, inch and a half. Again, I'm not measuring. I don't care if it's absolutely perfect. But you could definitely do that. You could also use a ruler and kind of help you guide it. All right. There's my pineapple. How cute is he? Or she? I don't I don't really know. I don't know. Pineapples. They're not really people, so I don't know if I almost have a, a say in that. There we go. Very, very simple and easy. Okay, so there's my first pineapple. Let's go ahead and do the second one. All right, there are my two finished pineapples. They have their top on them, the crown, and then they have, um, the quilted pattern on them to make them look more like pineapples. So they're ready to go. So the next part is our letters. Now I use some black felt for this. You could use white, you could use another color, but I just kind of wanted it to pop so I thought uh, black was a good choice for that. So what you're going to do is you're going to do a little bit of applique to get these letters on to the actual pineapples and I'm going to show you my trick on how to do that so I just have a scrap piece of um, black felt here and then I have a small piece of heat and bond now it comes in a package kind of like this it's on a big roll here one side is paper and then the other side you can kind of see it's shiny it has little dots on it um, that's the adhesive side and that's what's actually going to adhere to the piece of felt. So I have my paper side and then my shiny side. Now to do this, I have all of my summer letters. And with applique, when you're doing applique, you actually have to turn it um, the wrong side in order for it to be pressed on the right side, if that makes sense. So what I did is I took my permanent marker and I traced all of my letters and then I'll turn that paper over and you can I can still see my permanent letters here and I'm just going to literally trace those letters or that letter we're just gonna do one because the other ones are done onto the paper side of my heat and bond. So my letter M is now traced on that heat and bond with permanent marker. You can kind of see that. And then I'm just going to press that heat and bond right to the right side of my fabric. In this instance, I'm using felt. So I'm just going to press it on here. And I said press it on the right side of my fabric. That's incorrect. I would press it on the wrong side. So if this had a pattern, I'd be pressing it on the wrong side. If I press it on the right side, then that just ruins the whole thing. And then I'm just going to cut my letter out. Okay, so if you had a pattern felt for this project, um, that would be really cute. If you found like a cute little pineapple um, felt, that was printed. Um, 
you could definitely make the letters with that printed fabric or one that like had a plaid or a stripes or something would be super cute. But you'd want to make sure that you're pressing that heat and bond to the wrong side so that the, the print is on the correct side. Okay, so there's my M. Looking good. Next, the next part <laughs> is I'm going to press my letters onto my actual pineapple pieces. And so this is the part where you actually kind of need to know what your pattern for your pineapples is going to be. So I'm going to move my sewing machine out of the way here. So I have an S, a U, and then M. So I have a blue, fuchsia, yellow. So one of my M's is going to go here. And then I'm going to just repeat the pattern, blue, fuchsia, yellow. So just spelling out my M and my E and my R. So it says summer. Okay, these two here are done. We already pressed them. So let's press this guy and we'll show you how it's done. So my pineapple's right side up. I'm going to turn my letter over and I'm going to peel off the paper side of the heat and bond. And you can see that the letter still has a film on it. And that is the actual adhesive from the heat and bond. And then I'm just going to line up my letter, try and get it as even as possible. Now when it comes to felt, um, it's pretty thick so sometimes it's really hard for it, the heat and bond to actually adhere. So what I did is I adhered the top piece and then I'm flipping it over and I'll adhere the rest on the back. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to make sure all my corners. And there you go. It's on that pineapple well. Now in the next step, you could, if you wanted to, if you want to make it a real applique, you could stitch around it with a straight stitch. You could do a zigzag stitch. You could actually do two layers. So if you wanted to take two pineapples and put them together, this wouldn't work because I have my, um, my crowns are different, but make it a little bit thicker, totally up to you. But because I want to keep this a, a simple, just like afternoon project, I'm just going to keep it like this and move on to my next pineapple and just add my M. So I'm just peeling off that paper. You can see that adhesive is melded to the back of the felt. I'm going to find the middle then I'm going to press the top. Again, because this felt is pretty thick, sometimes that adhesive doesn't stick very well. And I, I also don't like to press the felt because then it flattens out. It doesn't have the same texture. So I'm going to press it just from the back and it's going to adhere just a little bit better for whatever reason. At least in this project, that seems to work better than what I was doing originally. So that M is on there. Let's do the E. And I'm just doing that little um, press at the top just so that it'll stay in the right spot for when I turn it um, around. So I'm just pressing a little bit at the top here just so that it'll stick. So that when I turn it over, I have it in the right spot if that makes sense. All right, looks like my E's on. All right, last one, get our R. This pineapple just needs a little press. Pull that paper backing off. And stick my R on there. And the nice thing about this project is it's actually very forgiving. Right? If your stitches aren't perfect, if your letters aren't cut out perfect, in the end, it doesn't really matter. Um, it'll look good hanging up because people aren't going to really examine it real close. Now, if you don't want to put the word summer on there, that's fine. Uh, another idea would be someone's name. 
So if you're, you're celebrating a birthday or a graduation, um, what else? Lots of, lots of choices, but you could put different letters on there for sure. Find a font that you like and put all of the letters on there. So there we go. Summer pineapples. So cute. But next you're going to hang it. So I'm actually going to use twine to hang it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a big piece of twine and I'm actually going to just stitch the twine through like the top piece here of the pineapple, which seems really strange. I know, but I think it's going to work. Let's try it out. going to switch our sewing machine over to a zigzag um, to add this twine. Now I'm going to put a long piece, probably two and a half, three foot piece of twine at the beginning. I can always trim it down, but I can't add more. And then I'm going to place my twine behind those top three pieces of the crown. I'm going to place all of it in my machine and I'm going to sew a zigzag across those things. So let's try it, see how it goes. Okay, and then I'm gonna leave maybe like a hand width apart for my next pineapple to start. So I'm just going to move it here. Go across those. Again, like a hand width, so about right here. I know, it's really, um, the other thing is make sure that uh, you spelled your summer right, so all your pineapples are in the right order, because that would be really frustrating if you have to unpick everything because you spelled some are wrong or their name or whatever you are going to put on your pineapples. Okay. Pineapples are sewn together. And then I'm just going to leave, get a long tail on the opposite side. Kind of looks messy right now and that's okay. So we're just going to go through. We just kind of did a chain stitch. So we need to go through and trim our extra threads in between each pineapple. So that's what we're going to do right now. Let's trim up those threads. And yeah, it wastes a little bit of thread, but it also is faster. Okay, one more. And then at the beginning, we'll cut those extra threads. All right, let's move that machine again. And then you can kind of see our pineapple here. Make sure we spell it right. <laughs> Summer. There we go. How cute is that? So fun. And then it'll just hang up on your mantle and I'll kind of show you what that looks like here in a bit. But there you go. There is your fun summer pineapple bunting. Again, you can get the pattern in the description below. Um, it comes with the letters. Um, but again, if you don't want to use the word summer, you're more than welcome to, you know, print or uh, cut out more pineapples and write someone's name write an entire phrase, you could do two layers, you know, happy summer or something like that. Whatever works for you. But that is the project. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Can't wait to see what you make. Uh, make sure to check out the description to get the pattern and all of the links for the materials. You can also head over to the blog and get the step-by-step -step photo tutorial. Um, and make sure if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. 
and we'll see you guys next time.